Welcome. In this video, we are going to look at how to create our own custom color palettes for a theme. There are a few steps to this. And first, you want to get all the hexadecimal values for your color palette. Now, I put an asterisk after hexadecimal because you can, in fact, use color names or RGBA values, but you want to get those values ahead of time. So go ahead and get those. And then the next step is going to enable theme support for editor color palette. And this will allow your theme to override the default WordPress color palette and apply your own colors. Now connected with that step two, we're also going to add in the name slug and color value for each color we want. So we'll have a big array of all the colors that we want listed there. And there are a few different ways to do this and we'll look at some of those next. And then finally, you want to add the CSS for each color to your theme CSS. This is an important step and it may look like it's working in the admin area, but it won't actually work on your theme until you do this final step. So we'll look at how to do that as well. Other than that, it's pretty simple. We just need to follow these few steps for getting custom color palettes up and running. Now, before we jump into the code, I want to show you the simple one line here that we'll use to add theme support for the editor color palette. We've worked with add theme support before, nothing new there, and this should look pretty simple. Now, in order to add in the colors that we want, we start adding them as parameters into this add theme support function. So that would look something like this. You could see we have add theme support as we did before, but now as our second parameter, we're passing in an array that has name, slug, and color. And the name here is a human readable name. The slug is going to be something that's programmatic and we'll use this in the class names we'll see in a moment. And then color is going to be whatever the color value is that we want put out. Now this example only has one color, which would not probably be likely. And you can in fact just continue to pass parameters for each color that you want again and again, and they'll all be added. Now this could get a little cumbersome. So what we'll see in our code is that we're actually gonna simplify this a bit and we're just gonna say add theme support and pass in a color palette array and we'll elsewhere define what that color palette is. So that'll just make this one line of code a little bit cleaner. And then of course, we'll have to add our CSS onto the front end and we'll look at how that is done as well. So let's go ahead and jump now into the code and look at all of this in action. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is come over and activate 5.1 as a theme because then we will see these custom color palettes applied. I'd also recommend that you create some blocks here. I'm using a simple paragraph block so that we could see the background color and text color. So we could see that these themes or this color palette is applied by default. So we have this option here. We also have the custom color palette. And now let's look at how this works or real quick, I'll show you, update this, look at it on the front end. And we could see that the colors are applied here. So this step only happens if we have our CSS applied. So let's go ahead and break this down at a code level and look at how all this works. So opening up our 5.1 color palettes, we could see that we have a functions.php file and there's not much here. We see that we have add theme support being added and we'll just go into that and we can see that we actually have quite a bit now. So before we just used to have a line wide and now we have add the theme support for editor color palette. And then we have all of our colors added after this. So this is a really simple template. It should make sense. Basically you have the name of a color which is human readable. So we also want it translatable by our theme. Then we have the slug. This is how it's going to generate automatic classes for us that we'll use in our CSS. And I'll look at that in a minute. Now, if you want to get these even more descriptive, like JS yellow or light yellow or dark, make sure that they are being separated by a hyphen because these are going to be turned into CSS classes, again, as we'll look at in a moment. And then finally, the color. And we could apply this a couple different ways. We could do something like yellow, we could do something like RGBA, or we could do um, the hexadecimal value as I have in this case. All of those will work basically whatever is CSS. And this is only going to set the default color for someone to look at and select. It won't actually make everything work on a CSS wise, which is why we'll need to duplicate this in one more step in a moment. So now we have all of these set up here and you could rearrange the order. The order does matter. We could see here that we have yellow, black, blue, white. And if we switch that order, it would be reflected here. So that's really helpful because some colors you want might want to be more prominent than others. And we could see we hover over them and it shows us right here, JS yellow, dark, 
blue. So if you want something more descriptive or less descriptive, maybe dark isn't the best uh, color option there name, but that's where it's going to show up on the front end. Now, once we have this set up, we need to do one extra step in our style.css. And in fact, we'll come back to this again because I'm gonna show you a way to clean this up and better organize it. But first, let me show you all the working parts. In our CSS file, we now have a section for custom color palette colors right here. And if we come down, we'll see that here they are. Now we need to do two things for each one. We need to come up with this class name has dark background color. So this is going to be the name of the slug that we applied here, right? So this is what um, I mentioned that there are CSS classes added. So if we come back into the editor and look at applying background color yellow, and then look at this code on the front end, we could see indeed has background. So that is activated and then has dark or let's see, has yellow color, has yellow background color. This is the one I was looking for right here. And then it also has, has dark color, but because it doesn't say has dark background color, that's going to be applied for the text color. So for each of our colors that we do, we have to create two different CSS options. We have to create an option for if it has dark color applied as the color of the text, so in which case we apply color that we want. And then has dark background color will be the other one. So this is just a simple way and you'll need to do this for all of your different colors. It may seem a little repetitive or like some extra code, but sorry, this is the way it's gotta go and it's not too, too bad to manage here. Now again, I'll just point out coming back into this example, dark is going to be, yellow is going to be, the slug is going to be what is used in has whatever color or has whatever background color. And then the color here, this is just to give somebody a visual representation of what it should look like in the color picker when they select it. And actually on the front end, you could have a completely different color there. Um, so I really recommend that you make sure that those are the same. And if you update one, know that you need to update both, but we do need to do it in both places. So this should make sense. Go ahead and try this on your own. But before we close out, I wanna show you one little best practice that'll just clean up our theme a little bit more. So now let's come into our themes and select 5.2 custom color palette. Now this is going to look the exact same on the back end here. We're gonna have the exact same color schemes and options, but our code base is gonna look a little bit different. So now opening up our 5.2 custom color palettes, if I come into my functions.php, notice that first I get my custom color palette and I've broken out the color palette into its own file. So if I'm to come into my library now, color palette is just a named array here that has all of the values in it as before. And I like this approach because if somebody wants to edit your color palette, it's in one place, it's not mixed in with a lot of other code, making it more complex. So I would highly suggest that themes have a color palette PHP file where they list this stuff out so that people could easily see it. And if they wanted to make modifications in a child theme or something like that, they could do so and override that um, and pull it in. So the one other place that we need to reference is in our theme support. Notice that instead of having everything right here, we're just referencing color palette. And this works for a few reasons. One, in our functions.php, we're requiring add theme support after we get color palette. So that's step number one, make sure that your add theme support is coming after the color palette. And then in the theme support itself, notice that we have global color palette because of this being inside of a function in the namespacing and set up. If we want to get access to a variable outside of it, we need to call global on that so that it will have access to it, then we could put it here. So I think that this makes for much cleaner code, although somebody coming in might not know, hey, where is color palette here? So if you wanted to, you could add in a comment saying, um, see lib slash color palette dot PHP to edit color palette, but I don't know. I'm gonna leave that off and you could do what you want there. But that might be the one tricky thing is that if somebody comes in to look at color palette, oh, where is this defined? But hopefully if they just look at the functions.php, it should be super clear where all that is. And I would suggest following this approach of breaking it out a little bit, unless you only have a few colors. But if you get into 16 colors, don't put them right in here with all your other ad theme support. Keep that nice and clean. 
Okay, so there you have it. This is how color palettes work in WordPress. I encourage you to set up your own color palette based on a certain theme that you have or a certain color scheme that you have. And by default, I think every theme should be shipping with color palettes. I mean, what's the reason not to give some default colors that already look good with your theme? Now, if you have a multi-theme that may change depending on it, this could get quite complex, but you can put conditional statements in your code that depending on certain settings would load different color palettes. So we're not gonna go into that, but that is totally optional. What we are gonna cover next is if you ever wanted to lock down your color scheme so that nobody could pick a color besides the ones you offer, we can remove this custom color picker because no matter what, even if we hard code in a bunch of colors and say, hey, use this for our background color, uh, they could always come in and change that. So in the next video, we're going to look at how to disable this custom color picker here, which you may want to do in a few cases.